Aloha, ladies and gentlemen. Today we are making history. This bike that you see to my right is actually powering everything that you see on stage, including the lights, the sound, and the projectors projecting the visuals. So you are all a part of the first official bike-powered TED Talk in the world. Now we hope we can be a role model to other TED Talks across the country and across the globe. Because if we're talking about sustainability, or showing films, or playing music about sustainability, then shouldn't we be doing them sustainably? And now we can with the power of these bikes. So how do they work? Well, the energy created by my brother with his own two legs is being transferred into the back hub of the bike, converted into electricity, and transferred into a generator where we can store that power for later or use it simultaneously. Meaning, if he were to stop pedaling, the show still goes on. Now, the technology for these bikes has greatly improved over the last couple of years. So much so that, in fact, my buddy Dave, who helps make these bikes, just shattered the Guinness World Record for wattage produced by a bicycle. He produced about a half a kilowatt with just one bike in four hours. Now, that's equivalent to a photovoltaic solar panel. So we are well on our way to making bike power a legitimate alternative energy source. And the timing of this could not be better for the people of Hawaii. Here in the islands, we've been hearing a lot about 90%. 90% of our food gets shipped in from overseas. But did you know that 90% of our energy also gets shipped in from overseas? So if those barges stop coming, not only do we have a food crisis, but we have an energy crisis as well. Now, renewables have done a great job of relieving the symptoms of this problem. I'm here to remind you that the true root problem is that we use too much energy. Let me say that again. The true problem of our energy crisis is that we use too much energy. And the true solution is to use less. So how to make people conscious of their energy usage? Well, the same way we made people conscious of the food that they were eating. We've seen with the food sovereignty movement here in Hawaii, people demanding local, non-GMO, fresh, organic food. We're getting into elementary schools and teaching kids how to grow veggie gardens. And what we're finding is that when people have to create their own food, they're more appreciative of it, and they won't waste it. In that same respect, when people have to produce their own energy, they're less likely to waste it. Now, I promise you, after hopping on this bike, you'll never look at a watt of energy the same way. And I hope all of you in the room get a chance to hop on the bike during this TED Talk. I know it changed my mind. When our household first got this bike generator, we wanted to see what we could power in our household. So we started plugging stuff in. We plugged the air conditioner in, thinking if we can power our AC with bike power, we won't feel guilty about running it all day. So we plug it in, 900 watts. Now to put that in perspective, at the rate that he's pedaling, that would be nine hours of pedaling to produce one hour of air conditioning. From that moment on, we haven't touched our air conditioner. We started looking at other ways throughout our household how to cut down on our energy. How many of you out there have a MacBook laptop? So a MacBook at 100% fully charged is still taking one watt of energy per hour. Now you're thinking one watt, that's not a lot. But times that by 24 hours in a day, because a lot of us leave our laptops plugged in all day, all night. Times that by 30 days in a month, and that's 720 watts on your monthly electric bill. Now for those of you like me who don't have a Mac, a PC, it's even worse. That's 18 watts an hour, even after 100% fully charged. Now you do the math and that comes out to 13,000 watts of energy on your monthly electric bill. Again, that would be 130 hours of pedaling to produce the energy created by something that already is fully charged. So as a household, we started unplugging our laptops at night. We stopped using the AC, we stopped using the dryer, we started washing dishes differently, we took shorter showers, we biked more and we were saving money. And as a side benefit, we were getting healthy. Because once you know it, but biking is actually good for your health. Now, we all know we have a big health crisis here in Hawaii as well. But I'll save that for another talk. What I want you to realize is that these bikes kill two birds with one stone. They promote healthy lifestyles and they promote energy consciousness. But our household is a group of energy conscious people. So we wanted to see if this paradigm shift would translate to the normal everyday person, or say, a child. So we put it to the test, and we took these bikes to a fourth grade class at Haleiwa Elementary School on the North Shore. And sure enough, some light bulbs went off. Check it out.
Where does energy come from? So, he's gonna start pedaling, and I'm gonna be able to, I'm gonna shout out to you guys how much watts he's creating. 120 watts. Where does electricity come from? <laughs> 70. 85. 95. 110. 60. If you guys had to produce your own energy, would you be willing to do it? Yes. Yeah? If you're in a room with AC on or fan on the whole day, then that won't be saving electricity, so you should turn it off. So do you think you're ever going to leave your light on in your room again? Uh-uh. How come? If not, it's going to cost my parents so much money, and they might take it out of my bank account. <laughs> So if a fourth grader can understand the importance of turning off a light in a room not in use, I believe the rest of the world can. You see, these bikes are not going to solve our energy crisis, but they will bring about the consciousness to solve our energy crisis. Besides the education and the health benefits of these bikes, we see the best way to utilize them is to power public events. Imagine bike-powered concerts, film fests, farmers markets, baby luau's, weddings, even bike-powered TED Talks. And the beauty of these events is that we unbind ourselves from the limitations of fossil fuel. We unbind ourselves from having to be within reach of an outlet. So we could throw a film fest at Sandy's Beach Park. We could throw a music concert up at the Pully Lookout. I want you to imagine that, a full-blown music concert up at the Pully Lookout. And we could do that with just 10 bikes. That's it, just 10. And again, the beauty of these events is you go to it not as a passive listener, but as someone who's engaging in the event, much like a lot of you will have a chance to engage in today's TED Talk. So while you're pedaling away, looking up at your favorite musician, singing about sustainability, he's looking down at you saying, thank you for powering me tonight. It's a symbiotic relationship you can get from no other event. And I believe conscious musicians will start demanding for their music to be played sustainably. Here in Hawaii, we have to be sustainable. We don't have a choice. We live on an island. And I think we should be on the cutting edge of progressive thinking. We should be the role model for the rest of the world to follow. Because for thousands of years, the Hawaiians were the role model of sustainability. And only in the last couple hundred have we lost our way. It's not too late to turn back the tide. But it all starts with consciousness. So in summary, if a light bulb just went off in your head during this talk, ask yourself, who is powering it? Mahalo. <laughs>